Hello everyone and welcome back to our Amonkhet full set review. We are up to the red cards. We're getting fast, we're getting aggressive. Uh, and with me again to get through them is Anthony. How are we doing? Yeah, good. Nearly there. We're about, well, we're just over halfway, so let's go. Let's get into some red. We start off, as usual, with our god. This is Hazaret the Fervent. He is three and a red for a five for indestructible and haste. He can't attack unless you have one or fewer cards in your hand. And to get you there, you can pay two and a red to discard a card and deal two damage to each opponent. This is probably the easiest to turn on, I would think. Um, yeah, it's going to be weird when you don't, though. Hmm. Yeah, but I, I think this is a really good card, really scary, um, if you can curve out with this. Yeah, this is going to get, this, I reckon, constructed playable here. This is going to be a red, aggressive deck that just curves into Hazard the Fervent, smashing on turn four. Yeah. Yeah, great card. Pretty invocation as well. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, you heard about the. Um... <laughs> ha ha has the that word, the wording on this. Yeah, <laughs> you can't yes. unsee it. Yes, that uh, alternate. <laughs> but, but yeah, I think it's uh, cool, and I think I'll definitely want to play this in limited. Oh, yeah, for sure. This card's really good. It's just going to finish people off real quick. Mm. And even if you can't, just pitching a card turning every extra card you draw into shock is going to be pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to be... Well, it only hits the opponent, so... But, yeah, just... Yeah, hit your face, hit your face, attack your fire. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. Good stuff. All right. Let's get into our regular red cards. We're starting with the Arn Crop Crasher. So, another hasty creature. 3-2 uh, three, for 3, and it can be exerted. If you do exert it, uh, target creature can't block this turn. Get him! Uh, this card's really aggressive. Um... I really like it. Um, I don't know what else to say. Like, it's a good... Yeah. This, this is a card you need to be aware of when you're playing, because this is going to catch people off guard. It's hasty, so not only do you kind of need to have creatures back sometimes if you suspect your opponent's going to do this, you need to have two creatures back, because the first one won't be able to block. Yeah, and if they've got anything on the board already, you're just in a world of pain when this hits a battlefield. Yeah, I mean, if you keep up this one creature because you think you can block and you'll survive, then out of nowhere this comes down, your creature can't block, and you just get alpha to death. Yeah. So, yeah, be aware this is going to this is gonna end games. Exert doesn't yeah, matter because cool you're already dead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Play it in red aggressive decks is going to kill people. Yep. All right, next one is Battlefield Scavenger. One and a red for a 2-2 two -two Juckal Rogue. You may exert Battlefield Scavenger as it attacks. Whenever you exert a creature, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. Wow, this is a, another aggressive card. Mm. Um, this is really, really good. I, I can't say anything more than that. Um, I mean, this is just your 15 or 16 land aggressive red deck where you're just getting in, pitching anything you don't want, and trying to draw into more aggressive stuff. Yeah, red white looks super aggressive with all of these exert creatures, um, and their floor is never that bad. Their bears, yeah, this is yeah. Can't talk more highly. This is so good. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of reasons to play the ancient crab and the uh, June beetle, the one fours and the one fives to to survive yeah. this onslaught. They're a necessary evil, I think. This uh, is a card that's a lot less exciting. So blazing volley. It's a sorcery. It deals one damage to each creature your opponent's control. The problem is it's a sorcery, so they're going to see it coming, or you have to do it after combat. Yeah, I think this is going to be one of those ones that you get them after combat most of the time. Um, the other thing is if they've got a bunch of X1s in their deck, this is something that can just kill multiple creatures. That seems like a good idea in theory, but I just haven't seen that many X ones. There's a couple in white, but there's not that many. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Uh, yeah, a lot of two twos, uh, especially cheaper drops. I don't know. I, it's it's a sideboard card, I think. Yeah, at best, yeah. I'm not not too keen on that one. Yep. Bloodlust Insider is a reasonable red one drop. It's a human warrior one one and gives creatures haste. I usually don't like these cards because they're, they're sort of just... It's just give all your creatures haste. I guess that's kind of cool, but they, those cards usually are I'd never liked Fervent, so... 
or was it Fervor? Fervor, yeah, yeah the, the enchantment. The enchantment. Mm. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I, I'm not a big fan. No, not, not amazing, but again, if you need uh, another card in your aggressive red deck, you need a creature or something to help you out, I guess you can play it. But <sighs> Or any other creature. I, I might play it for the flavor text, <laughs> just so I can like shout out the flavor text in the middle of the, the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Uh, there's something to be said about um, giving your partner's creature in haste into HG. Yeah. Sure. Um, so that's something to think about, but generally speaking, I'm not for it. Yeah. All right. How about this one? This one is brutal. Uh, two mana for a 4-3 Minotaur Warrior. When it enters the battle, f- discard a card. That is a price I'm willing to pay. Definitely, particularly when there's that, various like four bonuses. Three is no joke. Like, discounted cards yeah. not even that bad because there are bonuses for having low cards in your hand sometimes. Yeah, and discarding like those things that care about cycling also care about discarding. So, mm. uh, it's going to be good. Uh, I'm definitely going to lose. This is a vexing devil stats, and for discarding a card, I'm pretty happy to do that. Yeah, there there was a card in Shadows over Innistrad. It was a three three. And it had Sulk. Mm-hmm. Um, this just has one extra bit of power. Yeah. It was playable. And this one, in red, I think it's much better. Yeah, definitely. Also, possibly, you're going to see some constructive play. You can see this uh, coming down, discarding some other cards for Madness, that sort of stuff. You've got a bit of extra mana. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good with Madness. Brute Strength is back. Uh, again, all the way from Theros, I believe. One and a red gives a creature plus three, plus one, and Trample. I don't know why I thought it had Scry on Brute Strength. Maybe that's a different one. Maybe this um, is a similar card. Um, that the, the Theros one may have had Scry, because it had a big Scry mechanic. Yeah. Um, this is a good card that will finish games. Uh, it, it looks like red, as it usually is, is super aggressive. This yeah. is a good card. We're not very far into red, and we can already see a very big, smashy deck coming together. Again, yeah, like 15 to 16 lands at most and then just kill you with threes yeah <laughs> this is just getting through and I've noticed uh, we noticed a lot of um, apart from those 1-4 and 1-5s a lot of even stats so for example 2-2 two, two, uh, creatures so if you're playing a 2-2 two, two, they're playing a 2-2 two, two, that plus 1 will be enough to beat their creature and mm. punch through for damage so that's um, something to note of this combat trick it's a bit better than it usually would be good card alright by force. What are we doing with this thing? It's a giant shadow. Um, yeah. Um, X and red uh, destroy X target artifacts. That seems pretty... I mean, not for this set, but it seems like it'd be good. Sideboard card. Could it be good against it? Like something like Affinity or something? Uh, I think for modern, that's the thing. You've probably already got enough effects like this. Um Okay. I don't. I don't. Maybe red needs one, but you have like Hercules Recall in blue, which just bounces all of the artifacts. For, yeah. For one in blue. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. This is just Chandra being Chandra coming in, smashing everything. It's yeah. I don't really get the card. artifact. Ah. So. Yeah. Yeah. She's when she's busting everyone the out of the, the things. Yeah. So they're gathering. Yeah, Gideon's there helping that too. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that story shapes up, but yeah, I, I don't see you playing this most of the time. We haven't looked at the artifacts, but uh, from ones I've seen, they're not that powerful. Yeah, could this see play in um, standard? Uh, yeah, possibly. Um, release the Gremlins is XX, which is pro- possibly a little bit too expensive, so if you want to smash the uh, Hearts of Kieran's and the Scrap Heap Scrangers for a turn, that sort of thing, then this might be an option. Yeah, yeah. You get multiple vehicles and stuff like that. All right, our cartouche. This is uh, Hammerhand, I think, is the equivalent that we've seen before. Plus one, plus one in haste. Okay. Or something similar. Yep, yep. Uh, and a creature, and creature can't, can't block this down. Um, yeah, I don't like these. They're, it's going to serve a purpose, but it's not something I'm interested in. No, I think it's sort of along... The, it's not quite a falter, but it could be in that area, so I might play it as a falter. But yeah, I, think it's good I suppose. Yeah. These things tend to work out better in Constructed than Limited. 
Possibly, yeah. Unless you have some really nice trials you need to pick up, I don't want to play the Scartouche. Yeah. Even then, I'll find a different coloured one. Alright. The Combat, combat Celebrant. <laughs> this card is uh, scary. Uh, two and a red for a 4-1 Human Warrior. If Combat Celebrant hasn't been exerted this turn, you may exert it and it as it attacks. When you do, untap all other creatures you control after this combat phase. There is an additional combat phase. Mm -hmm. So and after this combat phase. Yeah. They made sure you couldn't break this with Vigilance, because it can only happen once a turn. Yes. Yeah, yes. Um, I'm glad they did that. This will end games. Um, it's a 4-1, though. Does have any buffs? It needs haste. You need all. The, you need these haste enablers to get it going, so you can just come out of nowhere and get double combat and kill them. Would would that be broken? You think if it had haste? Probably, because you just get that double. Like Aurelia, uh, the war leader ability, when you just come down and double smack them. As I said, that just ends games. This one, your opponent can see it coming, so they know to keep up extra blockers and be ready for it the next turn. Yeah, but even then, it's hard. Getting two combats is huge. Um, and it doesn't need to be doesn't need to be alive for it to work. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pick this first and be. Sorry, I lost you a little bit there. Uh, so you're gonna pick this first and and be super aggressive. Yeah, just take every two drop two two, and just go balls to the walls. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Yeah, I like it. Consuming Fervor. So, uh, I, I know this harkens back to some card. I don't know what it is. It's similar. Someone will be able to tell me. But it's uh, Enchanted Creature Aura uh, for one red. Your enchant gets plus three, plus three. At the beginning of your upkeep, that creature gets neg one, neg one. But hopefully your opponent is dead before that matters. Yeah. Um, again, this is another role play in one of those types of decks that's just going all in. And this will, I think, in those decks be worth it. I mean, this is just kind of giant growth. Hit for I don't think you care if you get two for one on this one because you're playing this as a sorcery speed giant growth. Yeah. So, you know, you play your two two, and then you play this, and then another two two. Attack for five, and then attack for four, then three, and then two, and then yeah. yeah. By the time it becomes, but by the time you've used it up, um, the creature. Be, would be r largely irrelevant anyway. Yeah, you've well and truly got your value. I would say. Yeah. But uh, that that flavor text is exactly how red decks are supposed to go. Headlong Head is the only way to pass through the gate to the afterlife. <laughs> Smash through. That's it. All right, uncommon cycler. Um, deem worthy four and a red. Deem worthy deals seven damage to target creature. Sweet. Uh, cycling for three and a red. When you cycle it, you may have it deal two damage to target creature. So, I'm hopefully doing this for four most of the time. Yeah, you're not expecting to play this for its full value in red decks very often. Yeah. But if you have to, you uh, get late into the game, you need to kill some big thing that's blocking you. You're happy to do that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, no, this is a good card. Pick it really early. This is um, premium. Yeah, good removal spell. All right, we have the Desert Ceridon, which is some kind of dinosaur. I don't really know what's going on here. Um, uh, beast but, on the top line. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit strange. Uh, so it's a 6 mana 6-4, six, which is huge, but it has cycling, so you can get rid of it if you don't need it. Yeah, uh, which good I card. You're going to be cycling this more often than not, I think, in your red decks. Um, yeah, potentially, but, you know, 6-4 body is huge, um, and when you get to that, it's going to be good. I just don't see red decks getting to six mana all that often. It's nice to have it there yeah. if you need it, um, which yeah. I think is the be benefit of this card. But uh, yeah, yeah and that's that's the beauty of cycling. So yeah, you'll you'll be comfortable playing this in your sixteen land deck because if you get there, then you get there, which is great. And if you don't, you can just replace it with something else. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Here is another red sort of premium removal type spell. Four mana, yeah, deal four damage. To a creature. Yep. Yeah, it's target creature. Yeah, no player, which is sad, but 
Um, you the, you need these. This is a good red removal spell, and a little bit costs a little bit more than you'd like, but you'll take it and you'll play it. Yeah, definitely. Keep that on. Okay, we've got a Minotaur. Jeez, look at the art on that one. Um, Emberhorn Minotaur. Three and a red for a 4-3 Minotaur Warrior. You may exert Emberhorn Minotaur as it attacks. When you do, it gets plus one, plus one, and gains menace until end of turn. Wow, that's... Whew, that's a common? That's a common, and I think this is the top of your aggressive red deck. This is your, your curved topper at four, and just comes yep. in as a 5-4 with menace. Yeah, that's... Um, that reminds me a lot of the train from what was it from Kaladesh um, you obviously don't need to crew it or anything um, and it doesn't have trample which makes it less good but 5-4 menace is huge huge body you're looking at the untethered express the one that gets no, plus one that plus one. one counters or the other one uh, renegade freighter renegade freighter right yeah it reminds me a lot of that stats are very similar and um, but menace is huge yeah yeah all right, excellent card. We we'll definitely want to see that in my uh, red decks. Yep. All right, Flame Blade Adept. Uh, this one not as interesting. Possibly more a constructed plant. It's uh, one red for a one-two uh, uncommon Jackal Warrior. It has Menace, and if you cycle or discard a card, it gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. So it's kind of like a one-two prowess. But yeah. Not. It's yeah. It's not prowess. Um. I'm not huge on this, uh, especially for limited. I'm not a big fan. No, just one mana, one power is not enough in limited. No. Uh, we, we saw one recently that the flying men type, the Naga, that's unblockable. This isn't even unblockable. It's just harder to block. Yeah. It's just not good enough. All right. What else have we got? <laughs> Fling's back. He is back. Is Fling in the actual set, or is it just in the pre-con? It is in the it set. Is. This is something that you can draft. You'll see. Cool. Never flinch, uh, never falter, never fear. <laughs> uh, f yeah, Fling is one of those cards, isn't it? Um, I I always get beat by this card. I never play with it. Yeah, I don't like it in Limited. Um, I like it for the Atog deck in Constructed, in Standard. <laughs> we, we have an Atog at the moment. The, um reckless gremlin thing yep uh, relentless I think it is uh, so I know that there are at least a few people building that deck and I'm looking forward to having a go at it myself but yep 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 limited no stay away ah uh, there's always that thing with stealing their creature and then flinging it at another creature that's um well it has a okay, creature or player so you can get the, the two for two in that one yeah there is that but it's got to come together yeah. so yeah. See, so, yeah, here you go. You, you might be having some fun with this, but uh, overall, mm. it's not a high pick. Yeah. This card is weird. It's glorious end. It's so cool, though. It is. Uh, <laughs> uh, two and a red for an instant. End the turn. So you do these two things. So, end the turn. Time stop. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, at the beginning of your next end step, you lose the game. Yep. Final fortune. Yeah. So, yeah, Glorious End is a really good name for this effect, because it's just, your opponent untaps, and you say, no, that's the end of your turn. I'm having another turn. <laughs> yep. And, and then... And if you don't win, that's the end of the game. Like, this spell ends the game one way or another. Yep. So, it's kind of time walk <laughs> with a big downside at the end yeah. um, but if you've got Gideon's emblem yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> play it with Gideon That's nice. um, yeah no, I think this is kind of crazy I guess you could play Gideon on your following turn and get the emblem and yeah that's fine so that works out but yeah, then no. you've just sort of wasted a turn like <laughs> what you probably should have just, just played do... Gideon <laughs> yeah <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah. No, I think it's interesting. This is for all the people who really love going to time in limited and playing that last. It's that last turn moment. So like, can I win <laughs> or not? It's the game is over. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Um, are you gonna play this in limited? Are you gonna, in the red? Decks? Oh no way! No. no way! No way! You're not gonna just play like 
Time Orc? You need that one extra turn to kill them? No. Nah. This could be another creature that I could have used to kill them anyway. I don't know. Um, it's really bad early in the game, and all your cards in those aggressive decks have to be good early in the game. All right, I think I'm going to try this out, because it's kind of like Combat Celebrant, um, without the body, because you're, you're going, I want an extra combat, you get an extra turn, smash through, get an extra attack, so... I'm going yes. to try it. Yeah. I don't think it's that good, I mean, but I'm going to try it. What, what, yeah, I mean, it might surprise me. It, it does seem good, like especially if you're in a race, you can just... Getting an extra turn in that race at the end of it is huge. Um, and they don't... Your opponents... I oh, bet your opponent's stuff untaps. It does, So they get yeah. to block and they get to cast instants. Yeah. I think the fun <sighs> part of this is what, what you actually do. You don't actually do it in their untap step. You do it when they cast their first spell. Uh, because it exiles that spell. So you get them to do something with their mana, then you cast yeah. this. Or attack you. Yeah, or attack you. You blank their combat so that their guys are tapped, that sort of stuff. So, um, Yeah. Yeah, I, I like it. Unless you absolutely are going to win on the next turn, you don't do this in their untap step. So if you're sitting there going, as long as my opponent does nothing, I win, you do it in their untap step. If yeah. not, you wait for them to do something. Yep, yep. Yeah, I think this is going to be fun, and it's a mythic, so I'm not going to see it that often. So when I see it, I'm going to I'm going to go in and see what I can do with it. Yeah, I probably will too, honestly. Um, that'll be too, too good of an opportunity to pass up. Yeah. All right, so from one glorious end to a glory bringer. Oh, this card is so cool. Um, three red red for a 4-4 dragon with flying and haste, as it should have. Um, you may exert glory bringer as it attacks. When you do, it deals four damage to target non-dragon creature and opponent controls. That is sick. This is really cool. Yeah. So we've got the top eight game day uh, promo up there as well. It's on the right. Uh, so if you top eight your game day, you get one of these guys. Pretty sweet. Now... The thing about this, and actually in this one, I prefer the promo to the original one. Uh, I really like the promo art. Yeah. Um, five mana is it? Is it too expensive for uh, top tier standard decks? Yeah, probably. Um, oh, man, that's that's so bad, isn't it? It like, is. Like five more Hellkite wouldn't wouldn't make it today. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, there might be a green black, a green red deck that you can ramp out this. Because you've got a few green ramp creatures, so you might be able to get this out a little bit early. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it's possibly good enough. But yeah, just even a 4-4 four, four haste killer dude isn't really fast enough at 5, which is really yeah. sad. Yeah. Uh, what 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 a world we live in. Because yeah. game's just over on turn 5 at the yep. moment. Yep. Yeah, really cool limited bomb. Like as it, that's definitely fast enough for limited, where you get to just drop this and kill something on the spot. Yeah, and hit him for four. And hit him for four. Yeah, great yeah. card. Really good. And it's gonna be a glorious foil for light card. Mm, yeah. All right, the fresh prince is here. <laughs> this is this is Will Smith. I don't know how his agent got him on this card, but uh, once you see that Will Smith. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's also a bomb card for Eternal formats. So I'm going to start with Eternal and then work back to Limited because this is it's a 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. And whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact creature or land on the battlefield, if it's not a mana ability, that player takes 2 damage. So it's only your opponent's. And what yep. lands and not mana abilities are fetch lands. You crack a fetch, take three <laughs> in total. Go get a shock land, five. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. This is this is better than uh, the uh, red red Theros enchantment that I've now blanked on. That they play. Um, ah, oh, I know what you're talking about. Um, Eidolon of the Great Rebel. That's the guy. Eidolon of the Great Rebel, um, which deals damage for spells. This thing. So yeah. any artifacts. So affinity. You know, you want to equip your your um. Your artifacts, you want to activate Arcbound Ravager, you know, take two every time. E yes. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, do you... Uh, is it better than Eidolon? Yeah. It is? Okay. I it's better than Eidolon, because it's just... If, you, if your opponent's playing fetch lands, they're just taking damage. So much damage. You can kind of play around Eidolon a little bit, 
by being careful with how you cast your spells. Whereas if your lands, you need to use your lands. Yeah, yep, yep. Definitely punishes fetches. Uh, I like how it's one-sided. Yeah. It doesn't affect you, so it doesn't... And it's one, only one in a red, not double red. Um, yeah. But I mean, bringing it back, so it's really cool in modern, um, possibly in, in Legacy and some other uh, formats like that as well. Bringing it back to limited, though, it's just a bear. Like, that text is mostly irrelevant. Yeah, there's not much going on there. Uh, and even if there was, you could play around it. Um, standard? Uh, I don't think there's that many things that are getting Crewing activated. vehicles? It does, crewing it does hit the crewing vehicles, I guess. Yeah, that'd, that'd be good. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else there is, though. Oh, what's the other one? Um, ballista? Uh, walking Ballista, is it? Yeah, the Walking Ballista. Uh, that would be pretty good. But I guess the first... If you try and kill this with Walking Ballista, you take four. Yeah. So that's that's pretty good against that deck. Um, what else? Uh, is it hit Planeswalkers? No, it doesn't it, do Planeswalkers. No, it doesn't do Planeswalker abilities, but you can redirect the damage to Planeswalkers if you want to kill them. Yeah, I was just thinking if it destroyed Saheeli combo, but no. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. But yeah, good card. Yeah, good card. Um, I'm going to take it for my binder, but not f to win limited matches. No, definitely not. All right, let's move on. Hazard's Favor. Cool. Really cool art. I really like that. Um, two and a red for an enchantment, a rare enchantment. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may have target creature you control get plus two plus zero and gain haste until end of turn. If you do, sacrifice it at, be at the beginning of the next end step. Now, this is not a card I would ever play in limited. No, that's um, it's really interesting, and uh, you know, Hazrat's gift is bestowed only once because that creature is dead. <laughs> uh, yes, and then I mean they're probably going to block it anyway because they can't just keep taking that. But it's it's a card, and it relies on other cards being coming down regularly and often afterwards. Um, yeah. You really need like a token maker. This this goes well with a, a mobilization effect where you can just keep making a token and then swinging it in with it. Yeah. But uh, we haven't seen any effects like that at the moment, so it's not going to work yeah. in limited. Uh, maybe Liliana. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you need this. <laughs> yeah, you need this to make Liliana playable. <laughs> All um, right. Let's let's move uh, on to the Heart Piercer Manticore. Four mana, so two red red for a four three. When it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, you you basically fling. So heart piercer manticore flings a creature, uh, deal damage to power equal to creature or player, uh, and as embalm. So it comes back as a uh, for six mana as another four three, and does the same ability. Um, that's I really like this card actually. Um, it's pretty much just making things fight, but you're okay with your guy dying. Um, yeah, I think this is really, really good, really powerful, and getting with Embalm as well. Um, I think this is going to be really good. Going to the face is nice. Yeah, I think it's cool. You can you can just throw away your bears like if they've done their job. They're not particularly useful. You throw them at someone, or if you have an Embalm creature, a different Embalm creature, you throw it at someone and Embalm it back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, it works really good with the cheap Embalm guys. Yeah, it's not too bad. A good red card, more aggressive yep. red. Um, here's a pretty vanilla one. Uh, two red, red for a three, four hyena. Cool. In in sentence, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Uh, so yeah, this this is a very much an Ulrich card. It's um not not really <laughs> interesting. Pretty pretty straightforward. Aaron's pick for the set. Yep, definitely. <laughs> All right, play it if you need a four drop. Yeah. Limits of Solidarity. So this one is a, a Threaten. So four mana Threaten with Cycling. So three and a red, gain control of Tide Creature, it gains haste, return it at the end of the turn. This is another one of those cards that the downside is, you know, um, catered for with the Cycling. Yeah. I really like playing this card in my main deck now. <laughs> I wouldn't like to do it before. In, a red, in red decks, I'm always going to play it. And you get upsides with the things we've seen, like the fling, if you're playing fling, or with the, the manticore, masticore thing. Um, this You Ooh, sacrifice yeah. the creature or, that you, uh, you've you stolen, which is really nice. 
Yep. Uh, it's a little overcosted for a threaten, but at four mana with cycling, it's pretty good. So. Yeah, I mean, with threaten effects, you're doing it as a last thing, last part of the game anyway, so it's not a huge problem that it costs a lot of mana because it's usually you've played everything else out first, so that's fine. All right, so decent card. Ooh, good removal spell here. Uh, Magma Spray. One red mana for an instant. It deals two damage target creature. If it would die this turn, exile it instead. That's actually really huge in this format. Absolutely. Yeah, good card. Good card for standard, because it's going to get rid of those scrap heaps, scroungers for good. Uh, Ooh, and good yeah. card for limited, because it gets rid of embalmed creatures for good. Yeah. Uh, pick this early. Pick Take as many as you can. This card's going to be very, very good in this form, in limited and... You'll be happy that this is this exists for um, standard. Definitely. I also like that it doesn't matter how the creature dies. Uh, it, the magma spray itself doesn't have to kill the creature. If you do it in combination with combat and the creature dies, uh, it still gets exiled. So you can get rid of that troublesome embalmed creature uh, that way as well. Those sphinxes that come back and stuff like that. Yep. Yep. All right. Another manticore. Yeah, Manticore of the Gauntlet this time. Four and a red for a 5-4. Uh, when Manticore of the Gauntlet enters the battlefield, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature you control. Manticore of the Gauntlet deals three damage to target opponent. Um, interesting card. So it's, it's a bit weird seeing a red card with a minus one, minus one counter on it. Um, I just haven't seen that many so far. Um, or any, I don't think. Um, but this card is... Is good. I will always play, or not always play it in my red decks, but if if it goes up to five, you know, bolting my opponent to the face and then having a 4-3, yeah, pretty good. At five, this feels a little expensive for uh, limited decks. I mean, Lathnu's Sailback was not particularly good, and this, uh, which is just a 5-4 without the text. The, the Lava Spike really sells it, like you have to, that bolt to the face is important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, if it didn't have that, I'd be less keen on it, but it's a good body with good ability, so I think it's good. All right. Uh, we have an archer, a minotaur archer here, which is a 3-mana 2-3 with reach. It's fine. Uh, and it has sort of fire breathing, 1 red for plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. So it's a, a weird sort of archer, again, sort of a filler 2-3 that's going to be reasonable to play in your red decks. Yeah, Again, I, I think it's because there's a lot of two twos. I think this one's going to be all right. Um, and they, if they exert, they give them ma themselves maybe one extra power or something. So, and maybe one extra toughness, so you can fire breathe to match their exert. Um, I kind of like it. Um, just the way it, it's it sits by the looks of things at the moment. Yeah. Might just be well positioned. Yeah, I think in the first half of the red sets, we've seen a lot of really aggressive creatures. This one is with the going like red white this is probably more in your red green type decks where you're going a little bit slower you want to go a little bit later in the game this is going to help yeah. get you to bigger creatures but you got to remember late in the game this with the fire breathing it packs a punch uh you Absolutely. can't just let it go so um it, it reach is a defensive ability but that doesn't mean it can't you know swing in and hit real hard absolutely yeah it's gonna it, it plays both sides really well yep okay Oh, a next one that we can kill. Uh, nerf crop entangler, one in a red for a two-one trample. When it, uh, when you exert it, oh, so you can exert it when it attacks. And when you do, plus one, plus two until end of turn. So it becomes a three-three. Yeah, it's like it's creatures like this that uh, just make me think that this might be just a really aggressive format. Um, two mana, three-three trample. Every oh. other turn, though, I feel like this one is a fairly weak exert creature. You think? I don't know. Like a two mana three three isn't unheard of in regular formats, and you have to exert it to get that. Yeah, I suppose so. I don't know. I, the cards like this scare me. Um, oh, it's powerful, but yeah, you only get yeah, to attack okay. every second turn. Otherwise, it's a piker. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. So decent, but I wouldn't be too excited. Okay. Good call. Good call. Also, not super excited about this one. This is... Yeah, we've seen this one before. Uh, one in a red for a one through with prowess. Um, I get the feeling that red's not too prowessy. Um, a lot of your spells and stuff are going to be like cycling and or just straight up removal. Yeah. Um, 
yeah. if you somehow find yourself in a blue red deck and you have a lot of spells maybe as it's an okay serviceable two drop but i'm not real happy to be playing it yeah i mean it it might be one of those things where if you're playing defensive because there's a lot of two twos it could just be there to block but yeah. i'd rather than just play another two two than this <laughs> yeah. there's plenty there let's keep moving Pathmaker Initiate. Uh, so this is a tunneling goblin. Ah, uh, yep. Um, which is one in a red for 2-1, and a creature with two or less can't be blocked this turn. So get your little creatures in there. Yeah, this is a good way to finish a game after you've been really aggressive. Um, you can just get in for two points of damage here and there uh, to finish your, your opponent. Yep. Um, the card's going to be fine, nothing special. Yeah, I don't mind playing this piker uh, as it, it has utility later on. All right, let's pursue some glory. All right, three and a red for an instant. Attacking creatures get plus two, plus zero until end of turn. And it's got cycling for two. It's cycling yeah. trumpet blast. Yeah, I mean... Uh, we've seen trumpet blast. You know when you want it. Um, I never particularly want it. <laughs> but the cycling is also nice. It's just... Yeah. All of these specific cards that have a specific role now having cycling has just made them so much better i've i've seen you play rally the peasants a few times oh yeah that was fun <laughs> that were fun times yeah <laughs> all right uh we have a soul scar mage next this is a rare one uh one two for one uh it has prowess and if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to a creature and opponent controls put that many neg one neg one counters on that creature instead so an interesting card it gives all of your burn spells wither mm -hmm. so it turns all of that damage into neg one neg one so you can kind of build it up if you have to um i don't know if this has a place though do you think um it could replace m uh is it momentary swift spear uh no because ha that has haste i think that's, that's that, that haste is too important it's too important. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't play much older formats, but I just... I don't know. Um, yeah, I think the fact the Swift Spear can just come down and swing straight away uh, and get in damage is, is really important, this one. Okay. Um, I, I do like this card, though. I think it's really cool. Yeah. I think it's worth considering. I think uh, Modern Burn might have a think about this, uh, but I don't think the ability is worth it, if that makes sense. Like, there's not enough creatures that need to be reduced with neg one neg one counters that way i mean the big a big problem for them would be like goif and stuff wouldn't it true but if you're spending multiple burn spells to kill goif you... but that's what i mean you you'd kind of you might not need to like if you bolt them and then that makes this bigger do you know what i mean it, like it, it gets through it you can kind of sneak in something there yeah i can, I can I, I, i'm just I'm, I'm i'm picking out corner cases but mm -hmm. i'm just sort of if if the haste is that much more important, then yeah. I would think I don't play a lot of modern burns, so I don't know for sure. Um, we'll have to wait and see how that one plays out. But I don't, yeah. I don't really, I don't think they're going to get there. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm I'm interested to see where this one ends up though. All right, uh, so this certainly has a place uh, somewhere. Uh, Sweltering Suns, one red, red for a sorcery, deals three damage to each creature. Mm -hmm. Wow, um, cycling for three. Yeah, this is a really good card. This is a Wrath. Mm. Um, I mean, this is oh. Radiant Flames without the scaling. Yes. Um, which is good. It's good for red decks. So Usually. Like, like your mono red decks, yep. um, red decks, that sort of thing. Yeah, I think this is one of those necessary evils. The problem is that... It just needs to exile stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's no anger. It, it, anger of the gods doesn't have that at the other half of that. Um, yeah. Anger of the gods would have fit here. They could have just straight reprinted that because we have gods. Yeah. Yeah, they missed their opportunity. But uh, they uh, decided to put cycling on it instead. Which is fine, I guess. Yeah. If you don't want it, yeah. you can cycle it. Yeah. Yeah, fine card. Limited? Are you playing this in limited? Yeah, always play this in limited. In your Always. red deck, isn't your red deck going to want to not kill all of the X threes? Yeah, then you cycle it if it if it comes up that you don't need it. Enough. All right. 
no, it's just it's just so powerful that if you ever end up behind, that it will just sweep your opponent's board. It's just you can't pass up that yeah. opportunity. Yes, yeah. I can see it in the not the red white deck side, but more the red green or the red black something like that. Yeah, I mean it's got to be better than your twenty fourth card. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we have a uh, three two for three mana two in a red. This is a Thresher Lizard. Creature type lizard, and it has a bit of an upside. It has uh, if you have one or few cards in hand, it becomes a uh, four four. That's that's a big upside. Um, I'm always playing this in my red decks. Yeah, really this looks really good. As far as common creatures, like a three mana three two is fine, and then the upside is just great. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Nice card. You can play that in red. Yep. We have tormenting voice again. Back again. Um, you know, we I know what this. Is. I looked this up. This this was first. This card was first printed in Cannes, which isn't that long ago. It's yeah, been no. printed five times since Cannes of Tarkia. <laughs> it looks like they've found a winner. So many. <laughs> um, they love this card yeah. at the moment. Yeah, I mean it's it's a cool card to have. Um, they probably want red has some some kind of card advantage. So and this sort of fits really well. Um, but. Yeah, I am not excited by this card, for limited at least. No, I don't think it's uh, particularly important. Maybe it's important in the standard environment somewhere. Helps you get discard. But uh... actually, now that you mention it, discarding there are discard synergies here, so that's something to think about. Yeah, keep yeah. keep an eye on it. I don't think if if you want it, you're going to get it. Yeah, these go late. Trial of Zeal, one of our best trials, I would say. Uh, when Trial of Zeal enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to target creature. But I th I'd say it's the best one. I mean, like, pretty easy. Yeah, Lightning Bolt, and uh, if you have some cartouches, you can get it back in Lightning Bolt again. Yep. It doesn't make me want to play the red cartouche still, but... <laughs> actually, may maybe... <laughs> maybe it does. Um, th this is a very good card. And, again, uncommon. Um, I'll be happy to take these. Yeah, definitely. You're, you, you pay three mana for three damage. Uh, in, in today's limited. Yep. Alright. True Heart Twins. Uh, four and a red for a 4-4 four, four Jackal Warrior. You may exert True Heart Twins as it attacks. Uh, when you exert a creature, creatures you control get plus one, plus O oh until end of turn. Okay. Um, this is one of those ones where you go exert creature, exert creature, exert creature, and then this, and then your team gets four, plus four, plus oh. <laughs> yeah, this is scary. I, I can see the ex exert deck just murdering you with this. Um, yeah, this is a good curve topper. Um, four, four is good body by itself, and it's going to be, be a five, four when it attacks at least, and going to pump your team. But I quite like. I mean, the ability also has haste, so it, it's like it itself may not attack that turn, but you can play this pre-combat, exert three creatures, and swing. Yeah, that uh, that's a good point. Actually, that's yeah. This 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 card's going to kill me so much. <laughs> yeah. uh, be aware that this is a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no, you don't have to let your opponent go to their combat step with this. Like, if you can kill this before combat, it's not a bad idea. Some sort yeah. of instant speed removal. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, a violent impact. So uh, we've seen this effect many a times, and again, it's one that's just being improved by cycling. Four mana, destroy target artifact or land cycle. I don't um, see this being particularly useful. No, I think there's going to be sideboard card. Yeah, sideboard yep. against those greedy mana bases. If your opponent's playing three colors, you might want to consider bringing it in to kill their splash. Um, yep. Or if they do have a sweet artifact, which I haven't, don't think there are too many, but we'll see. Cycling helps yeah. a lot. Again. Yeah, it does. Yeah. All right. Uncommon Minotaur. Warflare Javelinier. Javelinier. Uh, three and a red for a 2-3 Minotaur Warrior. When it enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to target creature and opponent's controls, where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. So. I like it. That is... Where it's, hang on, hang on. When it enters the battlefield, it deals X damage. Um, that's... Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's probably good, right? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean on the side of not good. Because, um, I mean, it's a 4-mana 2-3, which is below curve, certainly. Yeah. Uh, 
at three mana, you're okay with a 2-3. Uh, but at four, def I'm, I'm saying no. And that ability, maybe you're dealing two or three damage. Like, how many instant sorceries do most limited decks have? And how many of them will you have spent by the time this comes up? I, I just don't think it's going to deal that much. Sometimes you're going to get a little creature, but not that much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, killing a two drop's kind of nice, but that's only happening later in the game. You're not curving out and killing something with this. Um, I, yeah, I think don't yeah don't pick these up too early, probably. No, I mean, yeah. it's, it's an okay card, but I'm, I'm not super keen. Mm -hmm. All right, and our last one is to add insult to injury. Uh, <sighs> yeah, insult uh, three. No, you, yep. you just hate looking at these cards, don't you? I do. <laughs> Haven't. It yeah, go. Keep going. I'll read it. Uh, so the insult is a sorcery. It's two and a red. Damage can't prevent it this turn. And if a source you control would deal damage, it deals double that damage instead. So this that's a pretty huge hit. Uh, if you're going yeah. for the alpha, that can end the game. That's crazy, yeah. And if somehow it doesn't end the game, you've also got injury, which is the aftermath half. You can cast from your graveyard, deals two damage to target creature, and two damage to target player. If you haven't have six mana, you get to do both, which means you uh, double damage and then you deal four and four. That's this is going to end so many games. Yeah, uh, I'm going to pick this and play this every time. I think this is a first pick limited card. Um, this is also a card yeah. that I can see myself discarding because red has various ways to discard. So you just chuck it and then you only use the injury half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Potentially, yeah. I, I. Uh, that insult ability though <laughs> so powerful um, if I source you that just doubles the power of all your creatures yes yeah I, I really want to use that but you're right you have the um, the flexibility to just do that and that's a good just a good card by itself injury yeah so that's good it's um, searing blaze without needing landfall just about so it's nice yep all right. Well, that is all of the red cards. Red, as usual, looking very aggressive. Going to be coming super. in for a lot of damage. So. Yeah, super aggressive. So hopefully you you enjoyed going through the red cards. We've got two to go. I'll see you back here for the green cards very soon. Green, yes. Okay, see you guys. <laughs>